The Video Gamers Club was formed from a group of people from the Japanese Animation Society after we kept getting together to watch anime and playing video games instead. So because we had a group of people interested in both, we just thought we'd do an event. We figured if we like both, there must be other people who like both anime and video games. We thought maybe we'd hire out a cinema for a day or something and just show a different anime from new stuff and old stuff, etc one day and then Neil had a brilliant idea of hiring out the un union having a convention and so we started getting people and then I came into the picture and started organizing stuff. So we got together, we organized an event, we planned to have 200 people last year, we ended up with I think it was 400, 450 people through the doors so it, the event was a big success last year and we decided we'd do it again. I've been playing games all my life. I got into anime through Evangelion. Ever since then I was watching lots of animation. I was into Japanese animation for a long time. I've just got a huge burst in video games at the moment, so my main priority is video games at the moment. I spend a lot of money. This year has been much bigger and better. We've had uh, three screening rooms instead of two. We've had video games on projectors and stuff like that, so uh, we've had a big increase this year, it's really good we've had. But yeah, just came to have a lot of fun and it's great. We've had all sorts of people come along, uh, obviously we've had lots of people who are part of either the video gamers or anime clubs, lots of them have come along. Uh, we've had people of all ages, we've had some very young people along enjoying video games through to older people who are here to say, it's the art competition or just to buy stuff. Last year we had a fairly pathetic costume competition. I think we may have had 10 people show up in costume. Uh, and then one person had this amazing Final Fantasy costume which just blew everything else away. He went on to Japan and won some costume competitions over there with it. Uh, but the person who came second at ours actually won a con in Melbourne. But then after those two it kind of dropped off a bit. We still had a high, high quality, but very small quantity. This year we had dozens of people in costume. <laughs> Cosplay is a fairly big phenomenon across anime conventions in Japan and the US, and yeah, it seems to have spread here. So we made sure we had a much better cosplay competition this year. Cosplay is um, like costume role playing where you dress up as a character that you like or that you like or whatever. And the costumes from Hacksign, uh, which is a series being released relatively recently. I just wanted to check it out and be with people of my own kind and things like that. <laughs> I came to Con because I came here last year and I loved it. I didn't actually put together a costume last year, so I thought, well, I better have something to overcompensate for that. Here I am. I just love the atmosphere and the people here are awesome and you get to dress up and look like an idiot and no one <laughs> looks twice at you. <laughs> I'm cosplaying as Rabbi and Rose. She's a waitress bunny girl who just is crazy and works at a store called Gamers. It's not the kind of events that we can get very often in Adelaide especially. Um, if you go around to other states, I'm sure there's plenty of places we can gather with all the um, Japanese pop culture and things, but not in Adelaide, so it's a really rare opportunity. I've been watching anime since I was old enough to read the subtitles on the SBS animes, uh, like the old ones like Voltron and Robotech. Um, I've been into video games for just about as long, and it never occurred to me not to come to something like this. Uh, we had lots of events this year. We had three cinemas set up screening anime. We had the main screening where we had our premieres of <laughs> Full Metal Panic and Please Teacher. Uh, we also had a couple of more casual screening rooms. One was set up with couches and stuff, so that was pretty good. We also got a whole room the size of the Traders Hall dedicated to video games, and that's got video games objectives, video game tournaments, couches with old, older video games on it. <laughs> uh, on the video game side, we had lots of tournaments throughout the weekend. We had, they were up on projectors, so that was great. We also have Digislide, 
um, for finance projectors in the video games room. We've got guys from uh, the new iToy for the PlayStation. So we've got a few big companies come down. Activision's been throwing posters and games at us to show us. So. Madman Entertainment are the distributors of most of the anime in Australia, and they gave a general panel about what they do. Uh, what we do, we do everything from the licensing of DVDs, like I'm talking anime titles here really. Uh, we do the production of the DVD, the design, the marketing, the packaging, um, web, do editing for the video, cut up trailers, uh, yeah, subtitles, all sort of motion graphics as well, we do a bit of that. Yep. yep. And all the authoring as well, the DVDs including like, um, encoding the video, doing the subtitles, doing the menus, authoring the whole, uh, the whole DVD, as well as doing the, uh, the packaging and the whole sort of package together so we don't sort of send any work elsewhere, we just do it all in-house at uh, Madman Interactive. So. There's Madman Entertainment, the licensing company, all the anime titles and then Madman Interactive is the one that does all the production of it and you know, the board product into a marketable item for the Australian public. We also have a Madman Cinema range which we release a lot of sort of our house films, Australian films and um, just sort of anything that doesn't fit into the... Uh, like Donnie Darko. I think that's the main thing with Madman, I know we're trying to get a like, you know, one-to-one -one, you know, relationship with the actual fans and the, you know, the guys who buy all that stock and you know, buy the anime titles, you know. Always got an open ear to know what they want, you know what they want to see, you know what they don't like about something we've done. Um, you know. We keep in touch with them via our website. We've got um, a really active bulletin board, and a lot of the actual fans of our stuff come to that board to discuss, you know, how we work in the company and the things we're doing. And they give us, you know, it works well when they want us. If there's there's a problem on say the US disc, that gives us a chance to fix it up on our release, things like that. And they always sort of they give us suggestions. Yeah, even sort of design suggestions on how we should do some of our yeah. anime slicks and stuff like that. So we're always open to uh, suggestions from the, the fans of our uh, feedback. Yeah. Dance Dance Revolution had tournaments of that running all weekend. The Ultimate Gamer Decathlon was a uh, focus, that was our flagship event for the video games. That was 10 different games from right back from the Atari 2600 to the modern consoles. So yeah, that was great. Other various events, we had a quiz night with questions all anime and video game related. We had uh, panels, we had discussion panels with industry representatives such as people from Ratbag. More about the future of video games in their perspective. They're actually going to invite five public people to come up and talk about it as well. Uh, Ratbag ran two panels. The first get first panel was retro versus new games. Uh, the people on the panel were a number of representatives from Ratbag, plus we had a few members of the public who were selected to go on the panel, and then we had an audience sort of watching and contributing to the discussion. Um, I guess one thing that's always going to appeal to people, I mean, you're, in your real life you could be um, like living in a trailer and washing dishes for a living, but online you can be a cop. I think it's going to change a lot as soon as um, you have much more accessible uh, massively multiplayer on consoles, simply because it's, more, it's a much more accessible device than a PC. Uh, a lot of people when they first started making MMOGs thought that you, we wouldn't, it's not like making a normal game because the story evolves out of the interactions of all the players. But I think that actually turned out not to be true, with the exception of things like what's happening in Sims Online. But um, I remember they actually did that in, in the first Ultima Online. They didn't really have much story, they didn't really have progressing, uh, like an overarching story to the game, because the, the idea was that the players would create a story, but then that didn't happen, players don't want to create a story. So I think the, the situation is that massively multiplayer games are still games, they're not like a different, a different thing altogether. I think when they first came out people thought this is an entirely new thing, but I think it's gone back the other way, that it's just like a game just happened to have a million people playing it. I, I won't play online games anymore. Are you more? Yeah, I got broadband so I could. Yeah. And then, but the people on them, they're assholes. <laughs> I refuse to play anymore because of other people. 
If I play a game, I want to play by myself or just with as close as mm -hmm. Then this is due to kind of bullying issues. Well, it's, no, it's just younger yeah. gamers being turds, you know. They can't spell right. They do nothing but insult <laughs> you the whole time. They yeah. like the Sims mod thing where they come around and just destroy your fun. Yes. They're ruining your game. These new kids come in and they really they use the internet as a sort of a shield. Mm -hmm. Like they can they can act as your superior and you can't the shit out of them because they're, they're on the other side of the country or the planet or yeah. whatever, you know. You always get that problem where you have younger players who kind of get on there and want to just, you know, I don't want to play play this game properly, I just want to have some fun. For games to really take off like that, you need to find some way of stopping hackers from doing... Yeah. I mean, these are all really packed things, but they're also, I would say, they probably make the online community and the game themselves evolve. MMOGs at the moment are way, way, way in their infancy. Like this is like this is like Pac-Man compared to GTA 3. Okay. Oh, how cool many ones. how many people have wanted to play GTA 3 with multiplayer? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, how many people How many people have turned on the um, the cheats with the uh, people with guns? And people just run. <laughs> That's what the multiplayer is going to be like. Everyone's going to run around flamethrowers. You're not going to be able to walk to a car. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's kind of, you know, partly because of the community of people who play games. You know, it tends to be the hardcore gamers who play for us, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, there is a possibility that in the future, you know, as the hardware changes, so that, you know, more people have got an easy internet access at home, um, and the demographic of people playing the games changes, you could get, you could actually get an online world eventually where people start cooperating.